Alright my friends, this is one of my favorites. Assembled by Craftsman. Briggs and Stratton uh, engine. Classic. With the classic just means the uh, it's the type of mower with the engine below the carburetor, so it actually sucks the fuel up. Uh, this one just runs starts, but it runs terrible. So I'll just give you a little look at what that is about. Got a good primer. And now that I dump the gas out, you know, it might just fire up and go. They're, uh, they're a strange beast, these lawnmowers. Like if it's not getting enough air or something, right? I'm looking for a simple solution. I'll be able to tell by looking at the plug too. Right? Ooh, might be getting too much fuel too, right? Okay, let's start it up again. We'll do it two stages. We'll start it up without the air filter on there. And then we'll start it up and have a look at the, or we'll have a look at the plug. Hey, I'm going to see if it needs a little more air. I'm just going to, we're going to put a turbo on it. The more you can learn before you start tearing parts off, the better off you are, right? run a little better when I'm just a honk in the air down the throat, eh? Oh, it's running rich, dudes. And dudettes. I'm not touching it. So it's getting too much fuel. That's really weird. Okay, so I'm going to take the tank off and we're going to see what's happening with the, uh, with the intake. Okay, let's put you guys over here. Alright, let's bring you over to the bench. We're going to just pop that carburetor. Three eighths on the end. And a half inch on the tube. And this is a Murray. And the only difference between a Murray physically is the, uh, there's only one spring. This will be interesting for you, Mick. Mick from Mick Smowers. Okay. So, there's a, where are we? On a Murray, this hole is bigger. This hole is bigger than uh, a standard Briggs and Stratton MTD type more, and there's only one 
spring on the throttle to the governor. Interesting, eh? So now we're going to get this on a tray. Get the fuel out of it. See if we can get the fuel out of it cleanly. I don't like to waste fuel these days. Okay, I can filter that. Five Phillips screwdrivers holding this down. Eh, star pattern, I guess. This looks fine, but the the uh, diaphragm does look a little bit rough. All right, I'm going to clean up now, and we'll come back when everything's just shining. So let's try. This doesn't take long. I've tightened this up. We're going to put our spring in there. Now this is the spring I was talking about, Mick. On the Murray's you only get one uh, throttle return spring. Okay, let's hook her up. <coughs> Goes on the same way it came off. I'll be right back. Okay, this is our setup now with the stop beat with the two arms between the stop and the spring, the one spring over to this arm and the tank is cleaned on there, except for that light, right? Now we need some go juice in there. I'm going to use my uh, Mr. Funnel here. Give me one sec. It works, works good. gas we have in there. I'll put a little bit more in I think. That's clean. Good. Okay, let's lower it down. Start her up. I want to clean this spark plug so I don't have to take it in and out three times. Oh, it's a laser. We can fix that too. Three poles. Let's see. No. Dirty dog. Really? Possible to flood these things. So, on this Bridge and Stratton Classic, it looks good, but it's 
it's not the carburetor. It's not the it's not the seals for the intake manifold because it's burning rich, not lean. And I took the carburetor off my old lawnmower carburetor and a tank. That's it right there. I had to switch the butterfly valve for the throttle because the uh, this one is a Murray and the other one is a is a uh, um, Briggs of some sort. So yeah, I'm just going to do a quick check on the valves and uh, it might just be old and worn out. And it's hard to do a compression test because on these on these engines they they uh, at low RPM they test at 70 pounds and I know it's that I can feel it on the rope. So I'm just going to do a quick check of the intake and exhaust valves to see where they're positioned. And I think this one's going into the collector bin. I have to tell the neighbor though. <laughs> Bye. Alrighty, I've got this mower lifted up on the left side so it doesn't drip out too much oil. And it gives me a better angle to look at it too. I'm taking a little cover off. This one's nice. It's not covered up by a muffler or anything. I'm just taking a little cover off the valve inspection port. And uh, here we go. Good. And we're just going to see what kind of valve lash we have. Put a clamp on the brakes so that I can uh, move the engine at will. Plugs out. Okay, uh, exhaust, no, intake valve's open, exhaust valve is relaxed. I don't know the exact. Oh, Papa son. Huh. Let's double check that. Well, it's ten thousandths. Let's do the intake valve. So let's go to five thousandths. There's five thousandths right there. So the intake valve might not be closing all the way. Well, oh no, there's there's five thousandths there. So I don't really know what the reason is. It must be scored cylinder. But right now I do not have time to deal with a scored cylinder. I've got them lined up till uh, down the alley, lit almost literally down the alley. I gotta tell my neighbor. So it was a pretty loose 5,000. So 6,000 on the intake and 10,000 on the exhaust. That's about right. So I don't know what's wrong with this motor. There's a few more tools I'd like to buy. Off to the next one. All right, my friends, we are gonna do just one compression test on this bad boy. You guys should be able to see that. It's a little sideways for you. So I expect to see 70, any less than 70, and we know the engines or the the uh, pist the piston scored or something like that. Here we go. I'll do four. Me. Oh, it fell. No, it's reading 70. So now what? Do I check the, fly, uh, the flywheel key? I guess I should, eh? See you in a bit. Okay, I'm just going to pop the uh, flywheel cover off of here and see what the uh, flywheel key looks like. Because it's just, something's wrong with it, eh? And this is as far as I'm going to go. And it's good.
And there you go. So I am not going to go any further. The cost reward is just not there, guys. But it's running rich, which tells me that the cylinder is shot. Okay, enough of this one. Thanks for watching this uh, little Briggs Classic. Thank you. Bye. Hello, my friends. Bruce here. Well, this is the little Briggs motor that came out of the uh, self propel uh, Briggs, or self propel, it might be a craftsman. And something's really weird, right? Like, what I've done, I've just taken the head gasket off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts. And it actually looks pretty good on the cylinder walls. The valves don't look that bad. There's a bit of carbon, right? Evenly dispersed carbon, I might add. And then I have a pretty large palm. And I can usually put it right over top and feel the suction. And I'm not getting anything. See, or just tear it right apart and see what the rings are like. Like it should be. It should be sucking like crazy. So I'm just going to yank the head gasket off. We'll do a light scrape. You guys can see it some of this, right? I think the rings are shot. But there's no marks on the on the uh, cylinder wall, right? Like that should be Anytime that piston goes down, whether it's it's uh, sucking in fuel from the carburetor, like that valve's open, right, or compression, and then explosion, and then intake again, that sh that should suck my hand. Not right, right there. I feel just a slight tug. Now, I did a s compression test on this engine, and I it tested to 70 pounds. But they all, all of these have a, what they call a, a automatic compression release. So you, there's a little thing that makes the exhaust valve pop on every compression stroke. And then when it gets up to a certain RPM, that releases, and then the compression valve only opens when it's uh, letting gas out the muffler. So I'll show you that. There's the exhaust, and there's the intake, and then right there, you'll see that valve move just a little, right there. See that? Just a little tiny bit to let the gases out while you're turning it over with the rope. I guess it's sucking a little. Not a lot. Now, ah, I just had a thought. I'm going to get some oil. Excuse me. I'm using transmission fluid in this case. Now, that should increase the compression quite a bit. Just like when you got an old motor and you dump some oil down the spark plug. So let's just bring it up. But we'll just go around a few times. One, two, get some oil on that cylinder wall. Now I'm going to put my hand on there. Yes, much more.
Now, all right, we're going to get this flywheel off of here. I just feel there's something wrong. There's just not enough suction. Oh, <laughs> there it is right there. We'll come back after the uh, compressor turns off. I think a regular hammer will do it because we're not saving this guy, right? You want to see the rings? I think what we're going to do is put it in the vise. I think this is my only vise now. There we go. Pardon me. Pretty hard. Could have been me. Okay. Look at all the holes. Oil drain holes. This side. Okay. The upside down in the tray. Two pieces of wood. That'll work. One, two, three, four, five, six, three eighths. You guys still watching me? I got, I got uh, more things going on here than I can shake a stick at right now. There's a couple of marks there. I guess I better sandpaper that. one. Okay, let's have a look inside there and see if we've got anything really worn. Okay, here's the governor, governor. Here's the camshaft. Much different than the Tecumseh's. Same idea though. We're just going to undo this uh, piston. Three eighths ratchet wrench is the best way to take these off. Look at that plastic gears, eh? Drives me nuts. And they shouldn't be very tight. Oh boy. Well, I'm not going to use a hammer on that good wrench. You guys are getting some of this. Done up too tight. It's way too tight. There. Now we can use the ratchet wrench on them. It's the second one this month that I've had this tight.
There it is. And the other one. If you want to have a little look in here, let's get this one started and then we'll have a look. Right there. I'm taking off that nut. That one's already off. And that's called the, this is called the end cap for the connecting rod that's connected to the pistons. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the piston out so we can look at the rings. Counterweight out of the way and we push the piston up. Or we can do either. We can pull this out now. It's not coming out the top, guys, so there's a ridge. so close. But maybe we can get the connecting rod out of here now. Or the, the crankshaft, sorry. There it is. It actually looks good. So now the big the big question. We'll pull the piston out the bottom. fairly good. I mean, just, although the oil doesn't feel right. You're right with you. Let's check the uh, it's a compression ring that I think is gone. So we'll take it out. It almost looks like this thing's been rebuilt. And poorly. Something's not right, eh? Okay, I'm just doing a, a piston, or a, a ring gap check. That's about right. No, I don't see anything wrong with it. Alright, you guys. So, on that uh, Briggs Classic, I never uh, found anything specifically wrong, but look at this. Now, this is very normal color for a piston, and this this one came out of a seized engine, but it's still a. There's a couple of scratches on the skirt and stuff, and it looks like this. But look at the piston color and some of the ridge markings on uh, on this one. This one came out of the Briggs. It looks like it's been burnt. You see that? Isn't that interesting, eh? So I think so, I think this, this engine got hot. Now it might have been so dirty it just got hot and nothing else got worn, right? And then it started to burn oil and not run right. God knows, the guy who picked it up is my neighbor's son and he got it out of a dump. So somebody threw it away for a reason. Something bad happened to it, and it had no compression, because you saw it suck against my hand. Usually it will, you know, it'll pull the skin from your hand when you cover them with your, when you cover the piston, if you can get your hand over it. This one would be harder, because it's bigger. But you could do it easy with that one. 
yeah, that I think he cooked that piston and uh, ruined the engine. Black, silver, silver. Crazy, eh? So anyway, that's the end of that one. Thank you very much for watching this one, guys. It took me a while to get through to the end, but thank you.